And welcome back, folks. So you'll notice there's not going to be a video for what men want. The, we, I honestly forgot we we're having a massive snowstorm today. So, yeah, we're, I, we're, I'm snowed. Well, I could go, but I, it's not worth it. This is not a movie that's worth it. So instead, I figured I, I'll throw my hat into the what am I what I'm hoping for for Gen 8 predictions because we are getting an official Nintendo Direct tomorrow that was actually hinted and spoiled that we're going to get something on the 13th by someone. Um, and there's no guarantee that we're going to get the actual Pokemon like Gen 8 reveal tomorrow. Uh, what we might get is a reveal for the a Pokemon Direct later on. I've heard a lot of people say that. But let's assume for a minute we get Gen 8 tomorrow. That's going to be awesome. And I'll do a video of it on it when I get home. What am I hoping for out of Generation 8, though? What am I personally looking forward to? Now, I'm not at talking... I'm not speculating on what the region's going to be like or, um, like, certain th certain things specifically, what type of Pokemon I want to see, storyline, or anything like that. I'm just going to go over, like, the general kind of ideas and principles. So, first off, I need to check something real quick. Ooh, I need to get that right out of the way, too. Number of Pokemon that there are. I know it's like 802, isn't it? Number of Pokemon. There are, at this, as it stands right now, there are, uh, how many, no, how many Pokemon are, yeah. How many Pokemon are in I don't care about that list. Seriously, I think it's like two, 802. Point bang, I know it's over 800. It's not very hot, much over 800, but it's over 800. Which means, let's say it's 802. I think it's like anywhere between 802 and 806. Um, 802, let's say. That means there's 198 Pokemon left until we hit the 1,000 mark. Which they said that's going to be the cap off. I'm pretty sure they've come out and said 1,000's the cap off. Which means, theoretically, if they wanted to really space it out, they could, in theory, do three more generations. Even that out. What I one thing though I would least like, like to see for this generation, as opposed to like Alola and Kalos, is more Pokemon. This generation doesn't have to be first off, don't fill out the full 198. That's stupid. But it doesn't have to be a huge amount. Look, we got 98. We got let's say 102 Pokemon left. That's 98. You could do. You don't even have to do nine. Do 90. 90 is a solid number, I think. The, th the thing is, we had the initial 150, and every generation up until Generation 6, we had at least 100, and, uh, 100 new Pokemon, a minimum, which is great. That's that's more or less the nice, solid amount I'd like to see with new Pokemon. But then after Unova, after Gen 5, we got like, it was like 60 or 70 new Pokemon in Gen 6, hardly enough. And then Gen 7 had more, it wasn't a lot, but it had more. Honestly, I think the issue with the whole number system is the fact that Unova, you didn't, you, frankly, you didn't, there's, honestly, there's over 100 of it, it's like 156 Pokemon in Unova if you count the legendaries, you didn't have to go that many, I mean, I love the amount of new Pokemon we got, like, I love the fact it was all new Pokemon, I didn't have to deal with Zubats or Geodudes or anything like that, but at the same time, you kind of killed it, you could have just gone, there's Pokemon I can think of, right off the bat, you could have just gotten rid, you could have gotten rid of Trubbish and Gar uh, Garbodor, you could have gotten rid of Adino, you could have gotten rid of a bunch of them, slimmed it down to maybe 125 that's per that's a perfectly adequate number and then you would have saved a minimum of 25 pokemon add on there that means we would have had over 200 pokemon left to still get to so and then if you want to then you could have much more evenly spaced that out between like 70 70 70 if you want to do that per generation leading up to generation 10 i'm just worried we're not going to get a, a huge a, a huge amount of new pokemon this gen but I would be I would be okay with say I'll be honest I'll be I would be okay with even just 80 80 I think would be a set because look that, so 71 because you're including the starters so 71 that's honestly not a huge uh, a bad number of Pokemon 80 and that means you can then you know even out the remaining remainder ones for the remaining gens if you had to whatnot I I just hope it's not going to be another Callow situation uh, I I would like it's just a solid amount of new Pokemon. Uh, next thing, and this one might get me, uh, crucified in some fan circles. First, I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be open world. Don't have it open world, if I'm going to be honest. 
Uh, because, frankly, the open world concept doesn't make a lot of sense. The open world concept makes sense in an MMO. Uh, in something... For, if you're going to do a Pokemon MMO, make it open world. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. For just a standard game, uh, that doesn't quite work. Because, here's the thing. How are you supposed... To, is it, like, just the area you're in? Like, the route... Route one area is all just going to be lower Pokemon. It makes no sense if it's theoretically open world. Why how how your leveling how your levels are calibrated basically when you're dealing with wild Pokemon the farther you go out. Like you could be theoretically in like your second route, but if there's areas that are open world that you can get to that have Pokemon that are in their 30s or 40s, you're only in your teens. You're going to get screwed in that. So. I, I don't like the concept of it. Now, it's got, I, we know it's going to be a big region because it's the Switch. It's the most powerful console, handheld console they have so far. It can be even attached to TV, making it an actual TV console. So it's a powerful engine, which means that allows you for a huge world. We know that. We know it's probably going to be the biggest region to date. But it still needs to be compact on some level it can be huge like the routes can be expansive but there needs to be a limit to it which leads me to the next thing is that the store first off the story has been uh, has been getting more and more important ever since gen 5 gen 5 had a great story the gameplay eh, you need to balance it a little bit i think what part of the uh part of the if you want to make it feel a bit more open world you need to have a story, that a uh, main quest, but then be able to actually go on some side quests. But if you actually uh, play Pokemon again, very rarely do you have to go on side quests. Like, there, there's a couple plot relevant quests, but there's not a lot. Like, let's let, let's just quickly break it down. Yeah, like you have to rescue the no, the rescue the part from the Team Rocket member in the first generation was part of the main quest. Like you you had to do that. Um, trying to think if there was anything in Gen 1 that was, like, a side quest. I mean, Safari Zone doesn't count, really. That's just a location. Um, can't think of it. Getting the egg, uh, the Togepi egg to the Professor and back from New Barktown and Professor Oak. Nope, that's, that's part of the story. Uh, no, I can't think of anything in Gen 2 off the top of my head. Not until maybe the post game. Then you go into Gen 3. Gen 3, I think, does have... Does it have something? It's... The, no, it, Gen 3 to the best... And, and let me know in the console if there's something that's not plot-relevant that is a, what you'd consider a side quest. Uh, I can't think of anything that's a side quest um, in Gen 4 right off the top of my head. Oh, no, 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 I take that back. There are... There are mo. There, there's a couple. There's like going to the island with I can't remember. Lucas was the name. He got the the real Rilu egg. So that one, I believe was a side quest. Um. Yeah. No. There are a couple side. There are a couple like the double trader battle. Um. Battle battles like the team up battles you do. Um. Where you actually have someone following you. Those could kind of be considered side quests. The whole digging tunneling system. Uh. Mining system. That was that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um. Not really a side quest, but a fun thing to do regardless. Gen 5, again, even if you go into Black and White 2, there's not a lot of, in terms of side quests. Gen 6, forget about it. It's almost all main story driven. Gen 7, nope. So really, I mean, there, there's like a couple things like people who say, hey, you know, I'd love to see this Pokemon. Can you show me this Pokemon? There's that, but it's not really. When I say a side quest, you know exactly what I mean. Like you have to go and get something. Go through. And not just, like, go and capture a Pokemon show to something. I mean, there's something that needs... Like, like, what you get in the post-games a little bit. Like, going to, like, capture Heatran or something like that. Going to capture some post-game legendary. You have to go get something for someone. Then you have to fight someone for it. And then, uh, you, ha then you have to bring it back and then you get a reward. Something like that. That would be a little cool in the main game. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to detract from the main story. But that would be cool in the main game. Which, leading to the main game... The Return of Gyms. The the trials were fun. They were a cool, different take, and they were fun. Uh, it was fun to try something different. Keyword there being try, because honestly, I haven't replayed Sun and Moon since I played it the first time. First off, Sun and Moon is fun. I loved it. It's it's a great game. 
but it is a little easy. It's a little too easy. And frankly, the trials were not difficult really at all. When you, when you break it down, the trials are not dip- – because what are the trials? I mean, they're a little – I know they're a little different from version to version, but they kind of are – they are more or less the same thing. And I never played – and I didn't play Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. But the trial – what was it? You had to you know, fight Radita, then fight Eradicate. Then you had to fight your Kahuna. Or uh, then you – sorry. Then you had to fight the Trial Master. Then you had to fight the Kahuna. Okay. It's fine. Um, then you had to, then you basically, what was that? What was a mallow or uh, the water trial? You had to basically fish a lot. And then you fought, fought the wishy-washy. Uh, you didn't even fight the, uh, tr- uh, trial leader for that. You didn't fight mallow. I don't think just fought, uh, I believe you fought, K- uh, Kiowa. You did fight him, I believe. And then you fought the Kahuna. Then you get to the uh, the other one where it's you fought the Vicabolt. You just fought the Vicabolt, to the best of my knowledge. Um, and yeah, some of them are puzzle like, but like the fire one was just a matter of remembering pictures. Uh, you had to search for things in the grass one. It there's it doesn't lend itself to a lot of replay value. Whereas the gyms, I mean, yeah, at the same time the gyms are pretty standard. Like go fight them. Memorize the puzzle sequence, all that. But at the same time, there's a level of simplistic charm about that. There needs to be a level of simplicity about it. But at the same time, don't go to the Pokemon Let's Go route. Because there's a reason I didn't pick up Pokemon Let's Go Eevee or Pikachu for the Switch. First off, I don't have a Switch. And that was not a game that was going to make me get a Switch. Probably Gen 8 will be the one that makes me get a Switch. Um, but that that's just not gonna, the game that would make me get a Switch. In terms of any of the competitive stuff, I don't care about the competitive stuff. I don't play competitive. I don't do any of that stuff. So that that doesn't matter much to me. Uh, and really, story-wise, just give me a good story. Give me a good story. Because all the story, the story in Gen 5 is fantastic. Story in Gen 6 is okay. Uh, story in Gen 7, it's really in-depth. Oh, you know what? One other thing. Give me a jerk rival. Because I agree with a lot of people. I actually didn't mind um, Barry, Gen 4, and I th- actually thought the concept of two rivals that are just your friends was cool in Gen... I actually liked those rivals in Gen 5. But afterwards, it just... Gen 6 rivals, no. The rivals sucked in those. And Gen 7's not really any better. Gladion's not bad. Gladion's not bad, because personality-wise I'm talking about. Whereas How is just... No. He's just a boring... Ah, I'm happy! Ha <laughs> ha! No, I, I would like a jerk. Doesn't have to be a serious jerk. But you know, and Gary, just give me a Gary. He's not, he's not like Silver who, or you know, Red. I can't remember what he's called. I, if you're playing Silver, he's Silver. Playing Gold, uh, or if you're playing Gold, he's Gold. If you're playing Silver, he's uh, eh. playing Gold. He's Silver. If you're playing Silver, he's Gold. Um, just give me something. You know, ultimately, you, just give me a jerk. That way it's more satisfying to kick his ass. That's, that's the joy of a rival. Uh, but that, those are just some of the things I would like to see come back in Pokemon Generation 8. Um, by the way, in terms of things I don't want to see them do, I don't want to see Pokemon in the overworld for me to catch. That ruins the point of the game for me, honestly. It's like, oh, at least not in the sense that we saw in Pokemon Let's Go, po- uh, Eevee. And it's like, you know to play. I've seen the videos. I know how it works. I first thought I never got Pokemon Go. That for me just looked like a waste of money. Um, and that's not the kind of freaking Pokemon like roaming app I'd want. That, that's just stupid. That ulti- yeah, that's ultimately stupid in my mind. Um, but a that, that defeats the purpose of a Pokemon uh, game for me. It's like the fun is searching for Pokemon. That's the fun. And when the grass uh, like shakes and then go, the screen starts to flash, like you don't know what you're going to encounter. Could be a rat attack. Could be an Entei. Point being is that it's the, the fun of it is in the not knowing what you're going to get and the fun of searching. Now, granted, I can understand. Grinding and searching for something for so long can be taxing. I get that. But that's also part of the point of the game is to search all the land for all the Pokemon and be the Pokemon master. So that's something I don't want. I don't want to see Pokemon in the overworld. Or if they do it, it needs to be convincing, like tall, super tall grass, and I can see movement in the grass. Um, 
uh, and you know, if I focus and if I get close enough, then I can see what it is. But by the time I get close up to see what it is, it's going to come at me. So if I, I'm not fast enough, it's going to come at me. Um, so yeah, I don't need to see that. Um, whatever. Oh yeah, you bet. Wild Pokemon Battles better freaking return. I'm certain they will because they said the Pokemon Let's Go was for the more casual fans who kids who don't have a cell phone and can't play. Let's just shut up. Shut up. You designed po – I will never, never believe that excuse because that tells me if you really believe that, you've lost touch with your audience, sir, because kids, when they were less than 10 years old, were able to play Pokemon when you had wild battles, wild catching, just a level up system, the whole shebang. They understood it. So I don't get – where the logic came from. I don't. I digress. Those are some of the things I don't want to see. Uh, I'm sure it certainly won't. They said this one will be more for the actual core game series. So hopefully, if they do implement like maybe the um, overworld Pokemon, it will be done successfully in a more palatable way. I think that's the, I think that's the problem, biggest problem is that the way they did it didn't sit for me. Didn't sit well for me. I digress. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. Ideas for win stars, super magic, what if, anything I can do on the channel. Put that in the comments below. Let me know. I'll get to that at some point. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That's it. Um, Thursday will be... Ooh, oh, Alita Battle Angel. Thursday, definitely. There may be a Pokemon video depending if they do reveal something for Generation 8. So keep your eyes out for that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.